Good burrito. Yeah. I'll just take Connor's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> busy for lunch. Got all these shims. Shim shimini shim shimini shim shim shiru. Yeah. You knew that was coming in you. I smell it. I'm so predictable. <laughs> so we gotta figure out how to get these shims in there to set the depth of the ring to the pinion gear. Call it bevel gear. Gosh. Whatever, it's a pinion. I mean it's a ring. Bevel gear. And you already got the pinion set up because it was the same exact number. So we put it all back in the same way. Yeah, everything boils down to these at this point because I got this set correctly like we were explaining earlier. Mm -hmm. The pinion shims are, are the same because we're, we're putting the same number gear in in the same spot. Yep. They were both a 3.029. So there's all, all you can really do is go by their there charge it is right and measurements. There. Put the shims in. So, and now it all boils down to these. Yep. We're going to get a little bit of setup grease. And we're going to cross our fingers. We're putting all the same shims back in because it's the same pinion gear, the same transmission housing, and the same final gear, final, final drive. The yeah, only, but the ring gear, the I mean, bevel right gear is not the same. It's the bevel gear. So that could be a... That could be a variance. Yeah, that's gonna be a variance. You're supposed to put the bevel and the pinion here as a match set. Correct. And I'm not sure what shims I use as, you know, compared to the other ones. Right, but that won't matter. That's just, that's a shaft placement. It's just shaft placement. Yeah. That just moves the shaft back and forth. Yeah, I guess you're right. That wouldn't matter at all. Yeah, that wouldn't matter. Well, then you know what we could have done. What? We could have measured the height of this bevel gear and the height of that bevel gear. And seen yeah within the thousands within the thousands then we could have re removed one of these shims or I don't think we or added one. do we have the cap do we have the capability of being that accurate no. so there's no point <laughs> we're just gonna throw it together with grease and see if a pattern looks good yeah we're gonna and we could check the backlash the and make sure it's not ridiculous sure that, uh, we'll check the backlash on this one to that one and that try to get the same number too. Because really, that should set the backlash, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly I mean, as far doing. as we know. Yeah, so if this goes mm -hmm. in further, it's going to make this tighter. Right. You know? And eliminate backlash. And eliminate backlash. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to get a dial indicator on, and then we got to slowly move this, the gear like that. to see that's your backlash, backlash right there. Yeah, and then there's a setting for that. And then you put grease on it, too, and make sure that your wear pattern is correct. Let me see. Let me tell you what the backlash is. 40? Nope. 20? Nope. It's about 12 thousandths. It's more than that. No, it shouldn't be. I don't know. What, the, what does the book say it should be? Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. Right. I don't think it should be more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I read it at one point. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to keep doing your shim job. Ooh, that shim's ripped. Yeah. I don't think we're going to use it. We got other shims, and we that probably probably should mic that one and see what it was. But like we a, really mangled that one up. Like it was a pain getting them off. Yeah, we have other ones. They need a good cleaning up. I get this thing together. Yeah, I know. I know, but it's got to stay together. Or what's the point? All right, you ready to slide that in? Kind of. Well, that was tough. That's so stupid easy. Something's wrong. <laughs> it slid together too easy. I mean, stupid easy. Wow. I don't feel right about this. It'll be fine. How much dumber would it be if backlash was perfect and pattern was nice? Well, you're not going to put all the bolts in, are you? All the nuts. Mm, put put like four of them in there and just to get a close idea if you know if it's way out. Put like eight in there. Oh, you had to say eight because I said four, didn't I gotta you? I had to do at least double what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All right, so that slipped in there, and then he's going to put some nuts on there. Evidently, eight of them. All right, how critical can this thing be? <laughs> critical condition. So I got that pinion in there. That looks the same. That looks about the same. Depth wise, it looks the same, Con. The 90 degree where the gear faces meet, what's it like on that? The 90 degree where the gear face, yeah. Looks like this one's sticking this way here. Now what's the other one doing? Looks like that one's more flush. Yeah, I believe that. 
That's what I was thinking too. But that's controlled by pinion shims and we ain't changing them. I don't know. I do. <laughs> that's what it would be. Okay, so you're thinking, um, dial indicator. take a shim out, dial indicator, okay. Let's see what it is first. Before we see, we can, see what each of them are, right? Then we can guess because they're not helical cut. So it might even, it's almost one to one, I bet, I'd guess. Yeah, right. Right? Almost. So we're gonna get the same back, backlash between that bevel gear and pinion. Yep. And that bevel gear and pinion, and then we're gonna call it good. Oh well, if this one blows up, we'll do it again, I guess. <laughs> sure. All right, I gotta get out of your way. Pretty handy little dial indicator, Hannah. Uh, it's very handy. I mean, for this type of stuff, you really can't do it without a rig like this. No. You gotta have something. Oh, that's got a stiffenerizer. Whoa, that's cool. So what you do is you can adjust it, make it stiffer. And then you turn that little red screw down there, and that little red handle. This little red lever. Okay, and that- Tightens the cable inside all these uh, bendable. It tightens all the, all the joints. Yep, exactly. Man, it's just like all the stuff that's been invented, it's so cool. So you got that banging against the tooth. Yeah, let me zero it. Hey, <laughs> okay. Is it ready? Mm-hmm. Looks like about 5,000 is the way it's flicking back and forth. It's going from 4 to 15. 4 to 15. Yeah, it was pretty close. I said 12, didn't I? 4, yeah, 4 to 4. So it's nine, like four 9. 4 to 15, 4 to, it's about 10, 9, 10. Okay. That's what that is. You hear it clicking. Boy. Pretty good guess, wouldn't you say? Very good. So let me guess what works. the other one is. Sure, it's about 15. I'm gonna leave it at 15. <laughs> no. <laughs> you probably want to take that that really narrow shim that uh, had all the cracks out. Yeah, if we do take one out, um, probably what we're gonna do, check it with the dial indicator. It's not a whole lot different, is it? It's harder to uh, check this one because of that. A little stiffer. Yeah. Let's see if I can reverse this whole thing. Yeah, you can flip that too. So it's it's quite a useful tool. It gets the knob out of the way for you. Mm hmm. And that stays stiff. Hmm. All right. Why is it moving? <laughs> because of this. Oh. Want me to just hold it there? Yeah. I got it. So let's zero it in again just so we can not have to math so much. Math? Yeah. Okay, so it's negative two. Whoa, 15! <laughs> no, 25. 25! Oh, looks like I'm off. It's exactly 25. Do that again, yeah. It's 25,000. Ah, that's too much. It's too much. We gotta take it apart, take a shim out. All right. Well, get cracking. You got it. Ooh. There we go. Things slide right out. Yeah. Probably just got rid of that shim for us. We don't even need to go very far. You gotta bring it out though. Unless you want to just tear the shim out. Well, I think that's the one we want to take out. Well, look, I'm right in the way of the camera. Nice going. It's a major, well, you're going to get a lot of likes on this one. Major theatrical faux pas. Here, it'll cut you. That's why I put the gloves on. Put your gloves on. Okay, let's just double check. What are we double checking? So, we had 25 backlash. Yes, we did. You're gonna mic that thing up and see what it, which, what shim that is. This shim is a five. Five. Yep. Isn't it amazing how they make shims like that? How do you make a shim like that? Oh, good. That slipped right back on there. Nice. How come you didn't get that on, on video? <sighs> Cause I was a dummy and I didn't push the button. Man. There's a button here I gotta push sometimes. I tell you. Or it doesn't record. It was 
It was so smooth. Mind boggling. It was like uh, way too fun. gravy on a roast beef sandwich, wasn't it, Connor? It was easy. Deeming that done. Connor's putting all the nuts on because he said it's going to be between 20 and 15. No, 20 and 15, that's too big. No, that was 15. It's, it's old. I don't want to make it too tight. Right, okay, whatever. So all the nuts are going on, and then we're going to check it again. Well, five, two, gotta get the light. It's at one to 14. Zero. Well, it's 13 then, right? 13. Yeah, it is. It's the word 13. Do it again. Well, let's, here, let's dial it into zero, yeah, because I keep rolling the whole thing a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 11. Negative three. Yeah. It's like 11. It's actually where it ought to be. But Whoa, that how'd that happen? <laughs> That's a good question. Now you gotta roll it over and see what it looks like when it rolls all the way, no I binding or nothing out of that crap. Oh yeah, you wanted to see if it makes a difference if it's outer on the gear or inner on the gear. Yeah, because the book kind of shows like the quarter mark on the inside. I bet it's gonna be inconsequential. Oh, uh, yeah, that looked like 15 almost, right? The word zero. That's not moving. I don't have it set up right. There we go. Yeah, 11. <laughs> Looks like about the same number. It's the same. Same number, no matter where you put it on the tooth. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same as putting a feeler gauge in between those gears. I don't know. Seems to me inner would be moving less than outer of the gear, whatever. Because, uh, because yeah, I think it's just not consequential in a small <sighs> space. Gosh, this is a physics question that somebody with a much smarter channel could figure out. <laughs> oh, you're saying Tagman channel can't figure this out, huh? I guarantee it. All right, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> sick of laboring it. You know why I can't figure it out? Because I don't care that much. No, no, we just, we want to get this thing All rolling. I, know is I torqued every bolt on this time. Before we didn't do that, we eliminated, we were at 20. Did you step torque it? Yeah. So it should have brought, pulled it down pretty even. Sure. You didn't step torque it? Oh, I didn't step torque it. I just put it all at once. <sighs> oh my goodness. I should probably torque it again, remeasure it. We only took out 5 thou shim. Then we eliminated 10 thou of movement. Uh, I think that makes sense because of the 45 degree angle. I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good too. We actually got this assembled. I think we're as good as it's going to get. And you know what else? That pinion sticking out toward me is about the same as that pinion sticking out toward me. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're not going to get any closer. The book does want you to put uh, grease on it. Grease on it. Wheel it around. Yep. That's what the book. And nobody will find out. Find out that uh, you got to do something again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say we do it just for the fun of it. The only reason I'm going to do it, because okay. even if it says something, I don't think I'm going to do it. Well, it depends what it says. It shouldn't say anything too out of the ordinary. I mean, if it says something good, we'll be happy. If it says something bad, we'll be like, no, we'll put it together anyway. It should match that one. Yeah. Here, let me spin it. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, wow. You could have spun it from here, Con. It spins just as easy as the other side, too. It, it just looks like it's spinning. I mean, it's wheeling all the way around. Everything looks like it's... It's a gear that's meshing in and out. I don't know how. Man, it looks good. It looks just like this side does, really. That looks good. Does looks it? like it's rolling around. It's really easy. You're not feeling any binding spots. No, it's smooth. It's as smooth as the other side. All right. Probably it's that. Those, that rust on the gear that's making it, lubricating it. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah, it's really smooth. Yeah. It's just as, it's no different than when I go over to this one that nobody's ever monkeyed with. Let me see. Let me. This oh. one, if I roll it, it'll continue to coast. This one, too. I think we put it together a touch tighter than. What the original one was. Uh huh. So we're done with measuring tools, really. Yeah. All that dial indicator stuff, that stuff can go away. This is really big. Clean this thing off, put that in, and roll that over. 
not only is it done, but it's done and I feel confident about it. Yeah, I think I think it's good. You know, that's a nice feeling. Because you ever do something not really figure you did it right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Just everything I do. <laughs> Always worry about getting it done right, you know. You do. You gotta worry about that. What that did I? What did I forget? Really? What well, that four seven is a clear example of a disaster I did. That Not that I want to relive that again seven months later, but yeah. I still haven't got. So cry myself to sleep over it, <laughs> huh? So I got over that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we got everything in there spinning. So there's still some more stuff to button up, but that's gotta wait for the next video. So like, share, subscribe. All that fun stuff. We'll see you guys on the next one.